Welcome back to another brand new episode of Books with Not Just Brief. If you're new to my channel, then I'm Devolina and I'm a self-proclaimed book nerd. And I started this channel to talk about everything that's related to books. So if you're a book nerd like me, then you've come to the right place. Today's episode is almost like an impromptu episode for me because the book that I'm reviewing today, I finished reading it only yesterday night and I thought, wow, I need to review this book with you all. And that's why today's episode. Shall we begin with today's review? All right. Today's book is another book from my list of Asian literature TBR. And if you haven't been following me on this channel, um, I've gotten a little smitten by Asian literature off late. And I've read like a ton of Japanese and Korean uh, literature books. And I also did a very recent video uh, listing some of these books that I liked. I'll link it up here. Today's book is uh, The Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. So Sayaka Murata has quite a few books to her credit. Uh, I haven't read any of them. This is my first book by Sayaka Murata. And I've heard that The Convenience Store Woman um, was quite uh, well received in Japan as well as uh, across the world. It, it is actually an international bestseller. I read this book on my beloved Kindle because it ticked all the qualifying points for it to be read on a Kindle. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I did a recent video on how I choose the different mediums for each of my books, either audiobooks or uh, ebooks or physical books. I'll again link that up. So The Convenience Store Woman is less than 300 pages, or it's just about 300 pages, I think. It's um, based on my reading speed. It is going to be less than three hours. I think it was two hours uh, or something on the Kindle. So definitely a very quick read if you want to, if you're new to Japanese literature or to Asian literature and you want to see how, what sort of things they write about, then maybe this is a good book for you to pick up and read. So this book is about Keiko, who is a convenience store woman. She is not a normal child and has had issues uh, mingling with her friends and family since the very beginning. Uh, then she gets a job as a convenience store um, storekeeper and since then she feels as if she's been reborn and that now with the garb of a storekeeper or a convenience uh, storekeeper, she has almost normalized herself into society and that society is going to accept her because she has now become a normal person. Uh, and then the story revolves around her everyday life in the convenience store uh, where she has been working part time for for 18 years of her life or I think 20 years, 18 to 20 years of her life. And then her interactions with her family, her friends and then um, somebody else, which I can't talk to you about because you need to read about it yourself. And um, her experiences and the way she thinks and feels about the world. Now, it's a very basic story about this one woman and her interactions and how she, how she sees the world. But there is a very, very um, strong undertone where the author talks about all the deep-rooted uh, hypocrisies and the idiosyncrasies of the society uh, that we have, uh, where a society sort of uh, only accepts those that are typical, and anyone who's atypical or anyone who doesn't follow the norm is almost um, thrown out of the society. So these are very um, strong sentiments that the author uh, talks about through these, uh, through Keiko and through these protagonists. But there is this constant conflict between the narrative and the emotions, meaning I always felt that the that the author is trying to uh, trying to delve into something that is very very deep, but the narrative is you know almost almost pulling it back to shallowness, and that is something that I couldn't really get. I don't know if that was intentional or if that is something that was almost lost in translation. You know when when the original uh, story was written in Japanese and then it was translated into English. And I have read many novels which are great in their original language, but they, it sort of loses some of its essence uh, post-translation. I don't know if that this is, I don't know if that is what has happened to this book, but I almost um, felt a little confused uh, when I was reading this book because it almost, 
it, it felt like you know I'm being pulled into the depth and then pulled back out again before even I could, before I could even reach that depth. So it was a strange feeling for me reading this book. By no means am I saying that this is not a good book to pick up. It is definitely a good book. I mean, all books are good books. Okay, <laughs> no, there are bad books, uh, but. It left me a little confused. I would still want you guys to give it a read because, well, it is a short book, two to three hours of read at max, or maybe let's say four hours of read at max. And let me know what you felt about this book. And uh, yeah, that's 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 about it. If you have read this book, then do let me know what you thought about it. If you haven't, then maybe pick up the next copy of this book and give it a read, and then let me know how you felt about it. In any case, if you like this video, do like and share this video and subscribe to my channel because I come out with weekly videos every Sunday of the week. Before I leave you to your books or to whatever you were doing, I just wanted to tell you that this is the newest book that I'm reading, The Architect's Apprentice by Elif Shafak. I recently did a video reviewing one of her other books that I'd read, which was The Bastard of Istanbul. I'll link it above if you want to watch it. So with that, I would say wherever you are, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you till next time. Bye-bye.